Are you ready to unlock the magic of animations? In just a few minutes, I will show you how to master keyframes in DaVinci Resolve 20. No more confusion, just creativity. Welcome back to my channel. If keyframing in DaVinci Resolve has ever felt frustrating or confusing, you're in the right place. Today, I'm going to simplify the process and show you how to create stunning animations using the brand new keyframe editor panel in DaVinci Resolve 20. So let's dive in and don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more awesome tutorials. So jumping right into this and in our keyframes, we're going to go up to our main menu here where the media pool effects and all is. Now there is a new keyframes section here. You click on that. As you can see right now, there is nothing here. There is also a keyframes menu down here below the timeline and as you can see it moves with the timeline at the position that you're in and we're not going to be using this one today so we're just going to leave that one alone and we're going to be looking at this one. In here you can adjust all of the keyframes that you put in so if you want to see all of the keyframes you can go to this little three dots and you can display all video parameters. So what that does is it shows you everything that is able to be keyframed over here in the inspector. So you don't even need to really touch the inspector. You can put all your keyframes right here from using the exact same thing as the inspector. So for us, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna show all this. So we're just gonna display parameters of keyframes. And right now there is none that just cleans this up some. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over and we're gonna go here. This is the detail zoom. So if you want to work on certain keyframes within your timeline, you will click on this and it will just zoom to that section and expand all the keyframes in that section. The full extent zoom that will give you the complete timeline in one glance. And this is the full event zoom so you can actually zoom in manually wherever you want to go. Wherever the playhead is is where it's going to be zooming in manually. And this one here is the height of the keyframe so if you ever go below the keyframes right now this is set to automatic you can turn that on and off so you can adjust the height of your keyframes and i'll show you how to do that in a minute and from here this is the undock button so if you want to undock this you just click on this and it will actually bring it out so you can move it around you can even put it on a second monitor or make this whole section bigger to close it you either click on the keyframes themselves or you can click on the X in the keyframe window and that will redock it. We also have the three dots here and that will allow you to display the ruler in seconds or you can display it in frames. And once we put some keyframes in here, you want to be able to see that. Also in here, you can have show the handles on the keyframes that you already have on the line and the auto zoom. We just spoke about that and that is if you click that off this auto zoom once you have keyframes in here you will be able to adjust the height of this we usually always have this set to automatic zoom because we don't fool too much with height that we need to actually dial it in that much so what we're going to do now is we're just going to put a keyframe in here and show you some more features so we're going to put a keyframe on our logo what we're going to do is we're going to keyframe it and we're just going to zoom it out to where you don't see it and now we're we're going to move ahead a few frames and then we're going to zoom it in to where you do see it and we're just going to make it that big. So now what we have, as you see over here, we do have keyframes and it's showing you a very small portion of it. So we're going to click on the zoom detail and that will bring it more center, give you more room to work on. As we had spoke before, all of these are only available when you have keyframes on. This pointer is just to allow you to click anywhere within the keyframe area. The hand mode will allow you to slide anywhere on the timeline. You click 
click and you drag. And this one will allow you to put another keyframe anywhere on an existing keyframe line. This will flatten the handles. So right now you can see that it is bright. So it is active. If you click it, it turns it off. So if you have all of your keyframes selected, you can either select by highlighting and dragging, or you can do control A for all. And what you're going to do then is you're going to select a linear, which is straight lines as you see it now, or you can do an ease in only. So it eases in to position. The ease in and out is it eases into position and out of the position. And the ease out is exactly as it sounds. It eases out of the position. So we're just going to do an ease in. And as you can see, that brings up these handles. Now, if you had the flat line turned on and you do the ease in, now you see the handles are just flat across. So you can actually do a lot of stuff with this. So if you play this back right now, you can see that it kind of goes in and it just zooms up to the top. Now you can take this key handle and you can do whatever you want with it. You can take it and move it up. And now as you move in, it goes in, it goes back out and then moves in again. And the same with the other key handle here. You can actually never go past a previous or an existing keyframe. So you only limited to a small space. So what you can have a double step. So what you do is you zoom, it moves in, zooms out, moves in, zooms out again. If you do not use the flat handles, all of these ease in and ease out will be up to Da Vinci and it will, but what it figures is the best zoom in and zoom out. But yes, you can still grab the handles and you can still move it anywhere in any time that you want. Remember, you can only go between keyframes. You cannot go past an existing keyframe in either direction. So if our double bump, if you were to play this back, would it looks like is it just does it zooms in and zooms out zooms out again and, and just kind of steps up now what we're going to want to do is we're just going to take and we're going to reset all of this and we're going to add a zoom in and zoom out keyframe so what we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're going to zoom our image in and now you see that you just have this keyframe it just pops in and pops and that's where it stays so if we highlight all of them control a and we just do the ease in and out, you can see that it automatically will give you the keyframes that you want to see or actually what DaVinci wants you to see. But as I said, you can adjust these in any way you want. So you can just curve them up. You cannot go past the keyframe that you're working with. So in this case, it's just going to go in and slow down to a stop. If you're going to want to work with this one, you can do the same thing. You just bring it down however you want. It's, this is totally up to you to play with. So now if you play this one back, it's just going to zoom in and then kind of expand out because it's got this small plateau here. It's going to slow down and then it's going to speed up. Okay, so now we're going to reset. We're going to actually zoom this all the way out until you don't see it. Now we're going to create a keyframe there. We're going to move the playhead forward a couple of seconds and now we're going to zoom in. And the number that you see here on the zoom 0 0.930 is right where this keyframe is set at 0 0.930. So anytime you want you this ruler here is what is what the actual value in your inspector is so now what you see is you see you have a zoom here so now you play this back of course it's just going to be a flat out zoom in looks pretty stale because it doesn't have any animation at all so now what i want to do is i want to actually make this up here while it is zooming in i want it to actually start to become visible so we're going to go to the composite mode at the beginning of the keyframe we're going to bring the opacity all the way down to zero and make a keyframe there we're now going to go to the final keyframe and you can control the playhead from here as you can see at the bottom it's doing everything from here. So I'm going to now bring the opacity up to 100 at that point. Now you see you have a opacity keyframe here. So if you don't want to see it, you can turn it off by clicking on this. 
or you can turn it on by doing that. These three bars, remember before, you can see all the visible parameters that you have, the ability to set a keyframe on. Also, the displayed selected parameters. If you have audio, the audio will show up here as well, so you can keyframe audios. This expands all of the keyframes, and this will collapse all. So right now, we're just using transform and the composite. The rest we're not using. So at this point, if you play this back, you can see that it actually zooms in and becomes more visible from the beginning to the end. If you want to put a, an effect on that, you can as well for the zoom in and zoom out of the zoom. So you can ease in and ease out all of the keyframes. So now when you play this back, you can see that it's actually zooming in and becoming visible at a steady rate. So that is basically how you use all of the keyframes in DaVinci. Remember, you can use and do the same keyframe method down below. The only thing is, is you have to actually switch between. You have all the same functions where you can move the keyframe along with the timeline down here it does everything all the same so that is how davinci new keyframes work i would suggest just play with it have fun remember to subscribe that way when i put out the keyframing of the animated character you will get a notification on when that is done so until then have a good day